All right, so in this video, we're going to take a look at another example, namely uniform distribution. And from this distribution, um, and given these a random sample of four values picked out of this uniform distribution, we're going to use the method of moments to estimate the two parameters that are in this uniform distribution, alpha, which is representing the minimum value, and beta, the maximum value. So um, what we need to do is, since we have two parameters here, is set up an, an equa two equations, one by setting the first theoretical and sample moments equal to each other, and then a second one by setting the second theoretical and the second sample moment equal to each other. Okay, so for um, a uniform distribution, recall we had some shortcuts for the first and the second moments. So for example, the first moment is the expected value, and for a uniform distribution, it's the midpoint between alpha and beta. So it's alpha plus beta divided by 2. And we had a shortcut for the variance for a uniform distribution, uh, namely this, um, which is equal to e to the x squared minus the expected value of x squared, um, so that's how we could calculate the variance. And the shortcut for the variance of a uniform distribution is this is beta minus alpha squared all divided by 12. So the second moment is actually e to the x squared. So if we want to find the second moment, that's going to equal e to the x squared, which we can get by taking the variance, which is beta minus alpha squared over 12. And then what we're going to do is um, if we move the expected value of x squared to the other side, that would give us e to the x squared. So now we're going to add alpha plus beta over 2 squared to both sides. And that would give me my second theoretical moment. And what I need to compare each of these two theoretical moments to are their corresponding um, sample moment. So the first sample moment, that's just the sample mean. That would be 1 plus 3 plus 7 plus 10, all divided by 4. And so that comes out to 5.25. And the uh, second sample moment, we're going to take 1 squared plus 3 squared plus the um, 7 squared, plus the 10 squared. So we add up the sum of the squares on top and we divide by n. So we get a value for the second moment, which comes out to 39.75. So now we've got our two simultaneous equations that we would need to solve. Um, the first, by taking the first theoretical moment, so that would be the alpha plus beta over 2. And we set that equal to um, the first sample moment, which was 5.25. And then we take the second theoretical moment, which is the beta minus alpha squared over 12 plus alpha plus beta over 2 squared. And we set that equal to the second sample moment, which was 39.75. And now we need to solve this system of equations. So one thing that I can do is take the fact that I know alpha plus beta is 2 over 2 is 5.25 and plug that in to the second uh, bottom equation, which involved alpha plus beta over 2 squared. And so from the top equation, if I multiply both sides of that top equation by 2, I would get alpha plus beta is equal to 10.5. And from the second equation, you can see after I plug in the 5.25, I can um, multiply by 12 and then take the square root. And I can solve for minus alpha plus beta, um, which in this case winds up being 12.093, approximately. And now, um, this is a linear system, so this is much easier to solve than the system that we started with. So adding um, these two equations, I can solve for alpha and beta. 
Um, in this case, finishing this up, um, our estimate for alpha would be negative uh, 0 0.797. And our estimate for beta, beta hat, in this case, would be 11.297. So those would be the estimates for alpha and beta that we get using this method of moments um, process. And so we should stop here and um, just appreciate the fact that these estimates make sense, right? Our values in our sample, the smallest value was 1 and the biggest value was 10. So that's a good sign that the estimate for our minimum value is something that's less than our observed minimum value. And our estimate for the maximum is um, bigger than the maximum value in our sample. So um, sometimes you might go through an uh, estimation process and come up with estimates. You do all of the math correctly, but you get estimates that don't make reasonable sense. For example, if we were to get a maximum value, which was 8, that wouldn't make sense because I know the maximum value has to be at least 10 based on my sample. So um, one nice property we get from this estimate is that uh, the estimates actually make sense. Um, and so the, the next section in the textbook section 6.3 deals with some other properties that we might want our estimates to satisfy and how we can use these properties to compare which of two estimates might be better. So we've seen different ways that we can estimate parameters. Uh, maybe we want to compare these different estimates and pick the one which is best, whatever that might mean.